Our galaxy contains a vast number of stars, with some estimates going as high as 250 billion individual stars. Some like our own, some vastly different. Often these stars are run-of-the-mill and very predictable, but sometimes stars can end up in situations or go through strange circumstances that make them very different from most other stars. So here are 10 of the Milky Way galaxy's most interesting stars. Number 10. Mira The Mira star system is actually a binary system with a large pulsating red giant, Mira A, and a much smaller white dwarf companion, Mira B. To the naked eye, Mira A is a variable star on an 11-month cycle that essentially disappears and then reappears. This was known probably since ancient times, but certainly by the 16th century. What's going on in this system is that Mira A, the red giant, is shedding material into space. Some of this material then accretes around Mira B. This shedding of mass creates two interesting phenomena in the system. First, the system itself is shedding material into the interstellar medium giving it the superficial appearance of a giant comet, though the trailing material stretches for light years much greater than that of a comet's tail. The second phenomenon is that there appears to be a protoplanetary disk formed around Mira B from the ejected material from the red giant. This is strange since protoplanetary disks are typically found around young stars rather than dead white dwarfs. This could mean that new planets are forming around a dead star, something not known to happen before it was discovered at this star system. Number 9. SAO 206462 While looking superficially like a comet is a trait of Mira, looking superficially like a spiral galaxy is a trait of SAO 206462. This is a very young star surrounded by a protoplanetary disk, which is not unusual for young stars still forming planets. But what's unusual here is the structure of the disk, it's arranged as spiral arms. This star is relatively close at only 460 light years, and its protoplanetary disk itself is huge, about twice the size of the orbit of Pluto. What causes it to exhibit spiral structure seems to be due to recently formed planets within the disk being arranged in such a way as to shepherd and shape the disk into spiral arms through the action of gravity. Each arm of the spiral is being influenced by a planet, and there are at least two in this system. These planets are still forming, and the entire feature won't last long in geologic timescales. Eventually, the debris disk will thin out as material accumulates on the planets of the system until the spiral structure, and indeed the visible disk, disappears. Number 8. BPM 37093 Located in the constellation Centaurus, BPM 37093 is about 50 light years from Earth. This star was originally thought to be a white dwarf, but it was later found to be incredibly dense. It has a little bit more mass than the Sun, but it's all compacted down to about a third of the size of the Earth, making it effectively a crystallized star. White dwarfs in general are believed to predominantly be composed of carbon and oxygen, and a prediction from the 1960s said that cooling white dwarfs should begin to crystallize. BPM 37093 was found to be pulsating as a variable white dwarf, and this has allowed scientists to test this crystallization concept. It turned out to be correct, and in the case of BPM 37093, it was found to be as much as 90% crystallized, though estimates of this vary. So when you start subjecting carbon to high pressure and it begins to crystallize, you get diamond or something like it. So it could be said that this white dwarf, at least at some depth, essentially turns into a giant diamond. At that point, can it really still be called a star? Number 7. HE 0437-5439 This star is a relatively normal, young, B-type star, except that it appears to be moving extraordinarily fast, so much so that it's ejecting itself from the Milky Way entirely. The speed of the star is about 723 kilometers a second, or 1.6 million miles per hour. How this star ended up screaming across space isn't clear, it appears to have been part of a binary system, originally, that encountered a supermassive black hole near the center of the galaxy. Problem is, this would have had to have happened about 100 million years ago, yet the star itself is only about 20 million years old, if that. So the star may be a product of a merger of two binary stars that had themselves been previously ejected, though it's not entirely clear just how that happened but may have been a product of what was originally a triple star system that encountered the supermassive black hole at the galaxy's center. 
One star was captured and the other two ejected, which then merged at some point to become the Type B star we see now. Number 6. M.Y. Camelopardellis Stellar mergers are not unheard of, but actually catching a pair of them in the act of merging is relatively rare. Yet, that's exactly what we're seeing with the M.Y. Camelopardellis star system. Originally thought to be a normal variable star, it was found that M.Y. Camelopardellis is actually a contact binary system, where one component is eclipsing the other. Eclipsing binaries aren't unheard of either, but these two stars are so close that their atmospheres are touching. The two stars are both hot, blue O-type stars, much more massive than our Sun, about 32 and 38 times respectively. Eventually, these two stars will fully merge and form a supergiant star, confirming an older hypothesis about how such stars are formed. Number 5. Ui Scuti In a galaxy with a population of very large stars, just how large do stars get? The star Ui Scuti is one of the largest known stars in terms of radius. This star is enormous, with some estimates as high as 1700 times bigger than our Sun, and three times bigger than the famous red giant Betelgeuse and it's thought it's going to die in a similar way. It's thought that the star has begun to fuse helium along with a shell of hydrogen fusion. As it begins to fuse heavier and heavier elements, it will eventually hit iron. At that point of no return, the balance between radiation pressure and gravity will change, causing a core collapse supernova. Number 4. APEP APEP is a triple star system containing a hot supergiant and a pair of really strange and violent stars known as wolf Rayet stars. These stars are very different from normal stars in that they are fusing elements heavier than hydrogen and helium, yet are still fusing hydrogen and helium leading to a layered effect of different kinds of fusion. These stars are intensely bright, essentially being naked fusion cores as their outer layers are blown off into space. The wolf Rayet stage in a star's life is short-lived and a supernova is expected in this system. But there's something else that's expected here as well, when that happens. A gamma ray burst, making the APEP system the first known progenitor system for that phenomenon. Number 3. Vega This star is noteworthy for being close to our Sun, only about 25 light years, but also for being the fifth brightest star in the night sky, and for its appearances in science fiction, such as Carl Sagan's Contact. But in its own right, the Vega system is interesting. Vega was one of the first star systems suspected of having a debris disk, and in the days before exoplanets were confirmed to exist, suggested that since material was surrounding the star, then material for forming planets and asteroids was common in the universe. Thus it was likely that planets abounded. This has since been shown to be true. But there's another strange aspect of Vega. It's squashed. The star rotates very rapidly, and due to centrifugal force, the star is somewhat flattened out at the equator and compressed at the poles. This also causes the star to be hotter at its poles than at its equator. It's unknown if Vega actually has any planets, this is still a subject of debate, but if it did and you were standing on one, you would actually see the elongated state of this star visually. It's that apparent. Number 2. VVV WIT07 the study of light curves taken of stars in recent years has yielded a treasure trove of information about the universe. The Kepler spacecraft alone discovered several thousand exoplanets through this method, and successor instruments continue to do so. But there have been surprises, such as the difficult to explain star KIC 8462852, or Tabby Star, whose dimming events still aren't fully explained to this day. But there have been other strange stars exhibiting unexplained dimming that have been found. One such star is VVV-WIT-07, with the WIT part standing for what is this? This star is similar to the dimming events of Tabby's star, but exhibits much deeper events. One event actually dimmed the star by 80%, far higher than the deepest observed with Tabby's star, which was about 22%. Another similar star, but not quite, is known as J1407, though that star was explained through a planet with an enormous ring system that was blocking the light. This does not appear to be the case with VVV WIT07, nor does it appear to be a binary system which might also cause dimming events. It's still completely unknown what's going on with the star, and there are a lot of possibilities including massive dust clouds, but nothing quite fits the bill. But one thing is clear, 
Strangely, dimming stars don't appear to be very rare in the galaxy, and new ones are found regularly. It may well be that one day we find dimming that's not being caused by nature, but rather the activities of an alien civilization. Number 1. The Sun For something so familiar to the point that the activities of the whole of humanity, everyone that's ever lived, depended on it, the Sun is actually not that familiar of an object to the rest of the galaxy. Our Sun is a Type G quote unquote yellow dwarf, though it is neither yellow nor is it particularly small for a star in comparison to the much more numerous and much smaller red dwarfs. Type G stars make up only about 7.6% of the main sequence stars in the galaxy, but here's where the Sun starts getting rare. Stars like the Sun tend to be part of binary systems, or at least about half of them. Our Sun appears to have never had a companion, though this is still debated. In comparison, the closest G-type star to the Sun, Alpha Centauri A, is part of a triple star system. This generally presents an issue for planetary systems, at least ones like our own, and nothing quite like the solar system has ever been seen around other Sun-like stars, yet. But perhaps most conspicuous is how stable and quiet the Sun is when compared to stars like it. While it has flares and such, it's nothing compared to how active some stars like it tend to be. This lack of variation in the Sun's brightness over time may have played a part in the evolution of life on Earth, which as far as we know is the strangest aspect of this star. It didn't just present the conditions for life. It allowed for a full-fledged civilization to appear on one of its planets, which is likely something that takes a very long period of stability to realize. That set of conditions, which are not fully yet understood, may well make the Sun one of the strangest and most interesting stars in the universe. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently pondering the possibility of an alien visitation of Earth in the distant past and its implications on the Fermi Paradox. What if the solution is that they dropped by long before we were around, but didn't like what they saw and now stay away from this world? Think angry pterodactyl infestation of your starship. The aliens would be like, Earth, it took us months to get rid of the pterodactyls, and then we had to lure them back to the surface with jelly donuts. Not worth it. So, you guys still eating those things? Very disturbing. Be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer. And subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.